What is going on, everybody? It is episode 567 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Uh, the show does go on, but as you can see in the title, there is sad news today. Mr. Bocus passed away this morning. It's very tragic, unfortunate, but we will be honoring him today in the cute of the day. We are going so, to honor honor Mr. Bocus, which is we're going to remember him at his best. I never called Mr. Bocus, Mr. Bocus. He was just Bocus to me. Tim called him Mr. Bocus. I actually called him Bucko most of the time. And actually, uh, I, I was never always, called him Bucko. I, I always <laughs> called him Bucko. And I had a um, I had a hashtag that I would put in my Instagram because I posted him on my Instagram all the time. It was Bocus is my co-pilot. Yeah. And and you always misspelled it. I spelled Bocus with a C, not a K. And uh, it was my own unique but thing. Out of respect today, you spelled it in the title with just a K, Correct. as it I, should be. I used his government name today. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Bocus. We are going to talk about you a little bit more later later on it's going to be uh, it's going to be something special but guys uh there's a lot to talk about today it's going to be an interesting one before we get started would you hit the like button on this video please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed here yet already share the video with your friends so that more people can come in here hang out and watch this show hopefully not when you intro the show with such a depressing fare as we have you know it's a celebration for us but for somebody who doesn't know mr bocus you know they they're not going to be able to celebrate his life the way way we are also remember all super chats twenty dollars and over we will interrupt the discussion we will read those super chats right then and there and then we will do our best to get back on topic so what are we going to talk about today well as the headline uh shows you the tate brothers andrew and tristan tate have been re-arrested then re-released mm -hmm. by the romanian government at the behest of the british government because they are being extradited or it looks as if they are going to be extradited for similar crimes you know of a sexual nature uh, being prosecuted over there in Great Britain. Do you know if Romania is part of the EU? You're, uh, we, we should have Samira Khan on. She's a foreign policy We need expert. a foreign policy CX analyst yes, to call would... in and let us know. Chat, just, let us know. I was just wondering if yeah. they so had to do that. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. Uh, he made some statements after the fact. The audio is really low on that one, but we're going to, I think his lawyer released, their lawyer released a statement as well. Uh, Candace Owens had stuff to say. Other people had stuff to say. So we'll get into it. We're also going to talk about some backlash that's coming at, uh, that Lady Gaga has addressed because she posed for some pictures on internet National Women's Day with Dylan Mulvaney. Um, I'm surprised they weren't like yeah, just two the woman of the, yeah. Year, yeah. Yes, the, the woman of the year, Dylan Mulvaney. Woman of the year. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We are also going to discuss the fact that just yesterday, as you heard us mention earlier, there was the whole hullabaloo around Samira Khan and Catfish Girl, Hannah Barron. But now it appears that Twitter has deemed Hannah Barron a psyop. Yeah. Yes. So we are going to get into just, <laughs> just whether that is true or not. Ironic, right, that the girl yeah. who is known for, you know, actually hunting, fishing, doing all of this stuff outdoors. She's getting called catfish girl. Yep. The girl who photoshops all of her selfies to death is not being called catfish girl. Funny how that works, right? It's just so supremely ironic. So we'll get into <laughs> we'll get it. We got it. a bunch of other stuff. Uh, guys, we're glad that you're here with us today to celebrate Bocus's life and uh, do this show. So if you are ready, Mary, we will just get right into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. We do have some good news to start off the show today. If you have been following, uh, the Ripaverse has got itself another million dollar comic. Let's listen to what uh, Eric July has to say about it. We just went back to back to back to back. Yaira number one not only becomes our fourth million dollar campaign, it breaks Isom One's record and is now the fastest book to hit one million dollars for the Ripperverse. And it happened in only 24 hours. I can't thank you guys enough for all the love and support and I can't wait for you to read Yaira number one. We have quite a bit of information to get to you due to the benchmark, so stay tuned and again, thank you so much. We are so grateful that you choose to make the Ripperverse a go-to form of entertainment. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, uh, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. Well, it's, uh, my, my shot is like super <laughs> zoomed out there. Um, like that, 24 that's, hours, 24 that's hours. impressive. And it beat the record of ISOM number one. Now, one of the things that got brought up a lot when all of this story started, you know, when he started releasing comics, was people were saying that with each campaign, they were making less and less and that eventually he was just going to fail. That's not what happened here. Oh yeah, we talked we, about that. We did, we, mm -hmm. we discussed that. Um, there's also been a release of both a live action trailer and an animated trailer, in my opinion. 
The animated trailer is better than the live action trailer. Uh, there's been plenty of critique going on online about that right now. So you can take with that discussion what you will. But as far as the interest in the comic goes, there is clearly a lot of interest for this product right now. He also just announced the, uh, the formation of his new company uh, called Rip Ascend, which is a way of doing crowdfunding fulfillment for other creators. So he certainly is working towards building out his own empire in his own corner of the world. And that's kind of really awesome to see somebody succeed at what they do. Like I said yesterday, I like to see people put their mind to things and accomplish them. So the the trailers that was for movies or so no it's it's like a con it's like a proof of concept type thing it's not for an actual movie but it, there, oh, there's okay. a live action trailer like the accent on it is is <laughs> the accent for Yara is bad okay. uh, the animated trailer is much is is much better to me but he you know he, he addressed it he said like he's welcoming the criticism you know like a lot of people are kind of going in on him for this they're saying like look it's like critique it the way you would for Disney and mm -hmm. you should right you should you should critique the creator who are making these things. And I know there's a whole lot of uh, discourse going on around there and I'm not going to get into that. That's not my place in it. I just wanted to highlight the fact that the campaign is doing good and it clearly is resonating mm -hmm. with an audience. So, you know, big ups to him because we want to see more people succeed. And when you get a product that people like, people will come back for more. And that seems to be the number one thing, right? Is that uh, if you make something that people deem worth buying, they're going to continue to buy it with each new product. So right. let's, uh, let's, Good I give him. them, I, I applaud. All right. Uh, there is an update. This is crazy. Yeah, we, we have an update on a uh, friend of the show. There was, pe there was a lot of people. So Arden Young who yes. was here about a month ago. Not that long ago. Yeah. Arden Young was here and we interviewed her and she was chatting with us. And you might remember that she made this video series about exposing Hollywood and she was posting it on her ex account. And in one of those videos, she alleged misconduct against a photographer whom she met when she was 15. And she says this happened when she was 20, I believe. But she made the choice not to name this guy in the video. And a lot of you found that decision to be suspicious in its own right and you criticized that and she responded to the criticism and we got into it but it turns out that this photographer was just arrested yep. for sexual assault in LA and now we have his name and it's on the books his name is Kenneth Dolan and he wears very creepy glasses and uh yeah this says a 29 year old woman reported that she had been SA'd by the photographer in his studio back in January this year Okay, this isn't one of those old allegations. This is from this year, a yes. couple of months ago. And uh, it's weirder that he isn't even responding to the news. He is still posting on his professional account his work and acting like nothing happened. But Arden Young did decide to post about this and put more eyes on it now that, you know... Yep. Someone someone did her, report this guy. Yeah, finally. it wasn't her claim. It wasn't that, her. That it was this 29 year old and it was just this past year. She also points out they said before he rebranded himself, he was known as the go to children's headshot photographer. Right. So people wanted names to be named, and that's what we're getting now. Now that and she said that she was working with authorities to try and bring this guy to justice. So I don't know if she had anything to do with yeah. this. It sounds like it's a different person, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And she posted on her Instagram that he set his account to public again and is continuing continuing to post photos of actors and actresses after his arrest. It looks like he's deleted and limited comments on his recent posts. If you're in the industry, please spread the word that he is not safe to work with. He should be in prison. Yep. So that's, you know, kind of good news. Is that like the most depressing version of like a white pill that there is that somebody who actually did something wrong or who's been accused of doing something wrong in the past is actually going to stand uh, seemingly stand trial? You can have faith in yeah. the justice system at least yeah. and see what will happen to this guy. We'll have to wait. Hopefully he won't be interacting with any children. Let's yes. <laughs> uh, hopefully that rebrand holds and he, he goes to trial yeah. and he faces uh, he gets his day in court. Oh, and another update about a friend of the show. Rusty Cage. How long ago was, of the show. How long ago was I don't Rusty even on? remember how long ago that was. It was a while it was, ago. It was at least a year ago. At least a year ago. Rusty Cage was on the show. And, was, and at this time, he was already building his guillotine. Yes, like this project was already underway. I don't he was even building know. this guillotine like in his backyard. It, he was making content about it. And I don't even know the tone to take with this right now. I don't now, know either. I don't know I either. I have no idea if this is true. So Drama Alert posted this video 
saying YouTuber Rusty Cage may have decapitated himself via guillotine on a YouTube live stream. It's not clear if it's a prank or not. And it's been a couple days since that was posted. And Keemstar said, I still have no confirmation if Rusty Cage is alive or dead. I tried all day talking to his YouTuber friends and they don't know either. Can we watch this video? Well, it doesn't show anything. So, I mean, yeah, I guess. There he is. How did it get posted? That's what I want to know. How did it get posted? It was live streamed. Yeah. Oh, this was live streamed. Okay. Yeah. Feels very deliberate to me. <sighs> right, and okay. like Rusty Cage would be the type of person to do a performance art thing like this, especially because this has been a project of his for a long time. Like, I'm pretty confident that he's okay. Yeah. Confirmation would be nice, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have him back on the show, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yep. It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> yeah, so you can't see anything. Is the sound effect supposed to be that of splattering blood? Or a watermelon. Oh. Okay. Yep. It could be a watermelon. Yep. Uh, but I guess if Rusty were hurt, he would want us to laugh about it. <laughs> is that okay? How do you feel if you, if tomorrow something happened to you? How do you want people to to treat it? I wouldn't be building a guillotine in my backyard. I didn't say you die by be a guillotine, but you know, if I just died in general, like happened, in a car wreck, if something happened. I I guess I probably wouldn't want you to go on stream the next day and be like, Mary died in a car wreck. <laughs> <laughs> she never was a good driver. Like, I guess, I don't know, but I feel like I would have higher priorities after death. So Fair do point. what you want. I don't Fair know. Point. All right. <laughs> uh, somebody says that even if it's a prank, it's a disgusting joke about suicide. Okay. I mean, people are allowed to joke about things, yep. especially because this is about himself. Yes. Right. Yep. Um, so we'll have to wait and see for updates on this. Perhaps, well, you know what's going to happen though? These updates always come out right when we're live. Oh, yeah. They, they, he just updated everyone they wait, two seconds ago, and we're not going to know until 5 p.m. They wait until 3 p.m. Till, Every time. Until we're going live. Every for these time. Updates to happen. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> in some less depressing news, Sony is apparently very mad at Dakota Johnson for dragging Madam <laughs> Webb and talking about how she didn't watch the movie. Producers in Sony aren't laughing over Dakota's continued dragging of the film, how she's uh, how she sees the fallout of Madam Webb, and how she isn't taking any responsibility for the lackluster results. Wow, and and also they're mad about her comments, which she praised her. We, we we praised her for saying yes, this. Yes, we did. That she understands why it flopped. Yep. And, you know, in a way, she did actually take responsibility. And she said, like, I'm not going to be in a movie like this again. Yep. Um, but I guess they didn't want her to acknowledge the failure. Yeah. Just, you know, act like everything is okay. Put the blinders on and keep trucking like just the way that brie larson does yep it says uh, lots of people at sony are questioning her star power well i could have told you that beforehand uh <laughs> and now she's reacting to the failure um... will likely come back to haunt her one insider told daily mail uh they claimed the bosses had been fine with dakota's co-star sydney sweeney making a playful joke on saturday night live but drew the line at dakota's constant barbs well, Sydney Sweeney's comment was, you probably didn't see me in Madam yep. Web. Yep. Uh, this is the quote. It's okay to joke about your movie not doing well and, it's e and even lean into the bad reviews like Sydney Sweeney did on SNL with her monologue, but producers in Sony aren't laughing over Dakota's continued dragging of how she sees the fallout <laughs> of Madam Web and how she isn't taking responsibility for its lackluster results, they said. Quote, not every movie is going to work, but a lot of hard work is put in towards even bad movies, and for you... The, uh, for your star to shit on it is a bad look. Look, but the problem oh, is... Oh, they like, also said Dakota is being looked down on over her talk of the film because everyone in the production is thinking, what if the movie was still the same but also a box office gem? Yeah. She would be talking about sequels and probably praising herself over its good fortune. So they think that she's talking shit about Madam Web because it didn't make enough money, not because she saw 
that it was bad, yeah. that, it, that it was subpar in quality. Yeah. So I guess that her contract was performance-based in some measure. Maybe oh. she's mad that she's not going to make as much money because the box office was a failure. I appreciated her very, very kind of monotonous tone towards it. it, it I found it quite endearing for the most part. I mean, her and monotonous tone wasn't endearing when she was playing a character no, it's the in worst. the movie. In the movie, it's bad. In, in real, real life, life yes, it's different, life, it's apparently. Funny. And, and, what's, and what I find interesting is that I still love that quote where somebody said, the best thing they could do is give her a box of wine and let her do an audio commentary just dunking on the movie and DVD sales in <laughs> In, in no, I want to see her and Sydney Sweeney do a mystery yeah. science theater of Madame Web. Yep, I think that would be gold. And, and it's I think this is what we people talk about when they say like you need to learn to pivot with the with the like when the wind goes a different direction when the when you have to switch your direction. It's good on the on the studios to figure out how to do it. Now they tried to do it with Morbius and they just failed. They didn't know what the hell they were doing when they tried to make Morbin yeah. time a reason to go back and see it in the theaters. Reminds that wasn't me, the right um, thing to do. The YouTuber who refused to do a negative review for Madam Web. Chris Stuckman. Chris Stuckman. Yeah. Um, it's not the move to just ignore yep. the problem. You should point out the problem and criticize it. And also, you're criticizing a huge studio with um, a lot of resources. And just because people worked hard on something doesn't mean you have to praise it and give them a little golden like star like a like they're a kindergartner there's a like, uh, there's a there's a bingo card that you can get whenever a movie does bad like on twitter and you go look it up and it's the bingo card of like the of like how to like the bingo card of cope for movies <laughs> and one of them is like but they worked hard on it when we do these reviews a lot of times i will temper my criticisms with saying something like that like look i understand how hard it is to get a movie made i understand the the difficulty and bringing good art to bear but but that doesn't mean it's above criticism it just means that you have to if anything what that does is that makes it more impressive when something comes out well when you can acknowledge how difficult it is to make something and criticize it when it's bad it means that it means more when it's actually good honestly i don't think they worked hard on it i'm gonna be real i don't think that they worked hard on madam webb I think they were slacking. I think that they're in autopilot, just like the rest of Hollywood is. They are in a huge conglomerate. They're doing everything by committee. They don't put effort into storytelling anymore. So I, I don't want to hear it with all of your cope about how hard everyone worked on Madam Web. The movie freaking sucked. There you go. Quote that's that. And that's what I'm going to leave it and on. That's the final. And that's the final. That's the final word, word on Madam Web. And we're done. <laughs> All right. Uh, the greatest community note ever dropped today. Speaking of Madam Web stars, <laughs> uh, a Slate has an article out that says, it needs to be said, Sydney Sweeney's boobs are not that big. And then community notes came in and said, yes, they are. Did it need to be said, though? No, no. They're Did just, anyone need to say it? They're just uh, engagement farming. Like, if there were an article that says, it needs to be said, Sydney Sweeney's boobs are that big, I would still be like, no, it doesn't need to be said. Like, no one I needed to say anything. I think it needs anything. to be said. No one needed to say anything. It, like, this is turning into a thing where it's like, Reddit to find a woman hot. Like, you're yes. making it cringe to find an attractive woman attractive. Like, just let her, you know, be attractive and we can just move on with our lives. Okay, perfect. You know? Yeah. Like, we don't need to make it into a meme that she has a nice rack. Like, it's just leave it be. Uh, yeah, you, you could be right. It's becoming time, Reddit and cringe. But at the same time, it's, it's one of these things that they, <laughs> they know it's going to get high engagement right now. I know. They understand that anything with her name in it will be high engagement. I know. Yeah. I get it. All right. Guys, uh, if you don't know, there's going to be a remake, a reboot of the faded 1985 superhero comic book film. It's not a superhero. A 19, the 1985 film Red Sonja. It's high fantasy. And the reboot has been what you'd call in development hell for a very long time. I think this is actually one of those few examples where you could call it cursed Cursed development. Oh, yeah. And here's the problem, guys. Uh, the 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 character who's famous for her chainmail bikini um, is going to be in a film where it says, this is the star of the film now. It says, it's a very woman-empowered Red Sonja star says the reboot will subvert the original film's male gaze trope. Yes. This is Matilda Lutz who is playing Red Sonja in the remake saying... 
What I can tell you about Red Sonja is that the first ones in the comics were made with a very male-gazed orientation. Yep. This is a completely different story. It's very women-empowered, which I loved about the script. And I went to the Hollywood Reporter's interview with the director, MJ Bassett, who... I think this is relevant to information. MJ Bassett is transgender, okay, identifies as a woman. And this says uh, this whole project relies on an outspoken transgender director who gleefully defies stereotype. And this is the savior who's going to save this project from production hell after it has been plagued with scandals, with Me Too allegations. And This is all on top of the fact that the 1985 Red Sonja is widely considered one of the worst movies that Arnold Arnold ever made mm -hmm. ever like to this to this day I kid you not he said in an interview years ago he says uh, if my kids were acting out I would threaten them with having to watch Red Sonja 10 times if they don't change their behavior and they always did and at the premiere for That's the film funny. Maria Shriver says if this movie does not sink your career nothing will that was a Dakota Johnson moment he also he also <laughs> had an affair on set with Bridget Nielsen see this is definitely cursed okay Not also cursed. they said um the deciding factor resides in the lanky six foot frame of MJ Bassett a 50 something trans woman whose relationship with Red Sonja dates back to childhood and in her own telling borders on an obsession and with that in mind you should learn that MJ Bassett has previously previously said about the new take on Red Sonja that she will no longer be depicted as a victim of sexual assault. Which was a major plot point in the original film. Yeah, so that's going to be rewritten. MJ Bassett said, uh, I didn't worm to the previous script, which was much more sexual politics. Now, this sounds based at first. Obviously, in my personal life, I'm interested in that. But as a storyteller, I don't think it's inter interesting. She eliminated a key plot point from the original film, Sonia's rape by marauding enemies. Yes. Quote, I have no interest in fictional women who use rape as an engine of motivation. It's not a strong motivation. She's just a human being in the world of femininity. Whatever the hell that means. And this trans director is trying to tell us what femininity means and how a female character would react to being raped and whether that constitutes a valid motivation yep. for revenge. And all of the sad thing is all of that is deep. But the, the shallow factor of this is, look, it's not 2018 anymore, and there's more than enough evidence that statements like this about subverting the male gaze is not going to win you any fans when you're trying to promote a film like this. It's just not. This film has been through four, three or four different Red Sonias in its time frame. Also, somebody said, like, Arnold was the star. When was he in the chainmail bikini? No, he played Calador, who is no. basically just, he was Conan, but they didn't have the rights to Conan at the time, so he's Calador. Because um, he played Conan in the 1982 and 1984 films. I think those were the years on those. Um, at one point, Rose McGowan was tied to this. Amber Heard was tied to this. Another At another point, they were even going to race swap her with Hannah John Kamen, who was in the show Killjoys, which I actually really, really liked. I was just like, oh boy, another, yeah. another race swap. Uh, and of course, Brian Singer was attached to this at one point before he was Me Too'd. Right. He got Me Too'd, so they scrapped him. Um, and then... Later on, they mentioned that they hired the transparent creator, Joey Soloway, who had just come out as non-binary and was dealing with the repercussions of a Me Too scandal involving transparent star Jeffrey Tambor. The actor was accused of sexually harassing two trans women on set, allegations that he denies. And that partnership quickly soured as well. Like, this project has been followed by demons who don't want it to get made. I feel like you should just listen to the fates and scrap it altogether. Don't let anyone do this. It's, uh, it is interesting that, uh, a st I mean, there is very little in the way of a story that could be more woman empowered than a female overcoming a sexual assault to go on to do this so right? this is her motivation for like a retribution yeah. basically she was uh in in the original they said that she was assaulted by marauders and so the, the thing is if the director doesn't want to go there that's one thing but then if you feel such an attachment to the character wouldn't you want to do as much as you could to keep it closer to what the original portrayed right well it's just i'm gonna rewrite the entire catalyst mm. for the plot and the character arc and instead of making a new character with that 
with that story. I'm just going to put, I'm going to slap this IP on it. I don't know what the over under is on whether we actually see her in the chainmail bikini, but my guess is very, very low chances that that happens. Well, you can see in that promotional image right there, she's wearing a full armor suit, right? Yep. yep. I mean, at least it appears that way. Yep. Um, and, you know, she's a beautiful actress. She is. You know, no hate to her and, specifically. Uh, and, and she's probably a, been told and, to say these things. And a redhead. So that, that was the other thing. They're like, can we at least get somebody with red hair? She's actually not a redhead. But she, she dyed her hair for the role, I'm sure. Like, yeah, but that's than, cheating. That's cheating. Uh, like, But the thing is, like, with Hannah John Kamen, it would have been like with Ariel from The Little, from the Little Mermaid. It would have looked like, awkward. Orange dreadlocks. Yeah. 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 So... We'll have to wait and see. I, they tried. Look, I, I, I would put this film kind of in the same category as like when Vin, what was the last one? Um, uh, what was the last one that Vin Diesel did? Um, not Pitch, uh, oh, what was it called? Blood, somebody in the chat helped me. What was the one that Vin Diesel did a couple of years ago? Not Blood Rain, but uh, the point is it's going to be D-list stuff these days. It's just not going to work. Is it going to streaming? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I think this is gonna be a theater release. That's bizarre. Yep. <laughs> Not everything needs to be remade. No. You know, just because it failed and is known as a bad movie, you need to remake it? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't it's, know. Uh, it's it's not just really laziness. Really it. It's laziness through and through. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's more to get into today, and it's going to be absolutely ridiculous because there's a lot of just stuff Just try going not on. to lose your mind. Yeah. You know? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Guys, it looks like Gamergate 2 is upon us. And this definitely wasn't on my bingo card for 2024. But if you think about it, the timing actually makes a lot of sense. So in a, in a certain sense, I feel like pop culture crisis wouldn't exist if Gamergate had never happened. It's all time is a flat circle. Gamergate preceded Trump's election in 2016, and now we have Gamergate 2.0 leading up to the 2024 election cycle. Time is a flat circle. It all makes sense. It's all a huge conspiracy, but um, you guys have been requesting for us to talk about the implosion of Sweet Baby Inc., and I'll try to summarize it for you now. This was a woke DEI consulting firm for game studios. And they basically advise you on how to make your video game very inclusive and woke and politically correct and everything. A narrative consultancy firm, correct? Yeah, make all of the female characters ugly half le lesbians and stuff like that. And that's their job. So the co-founder of Sweet Baby Inc. was caught on video in a public speech admitting to the fact that they use fear tactics and weaponize cancel culture against potential clients that are gaming studios. And basically the advice is, you know, if they don't want to pay us for our services, you take them out to coffee and you terrify them with the threat that the internet will attack them for their video game not being inclusive enough. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Ooh, um, okay, so they're using cancel culture to stay in business, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure who exactly broke this story. It just seems like a lot of independent creators and YouTubers are talking about this and it's blowing up right now. And it's kind of snowballing into something that would resemble Gamergate 2.0. But unlike the OG Gamergate, um, I don't know who's going to come out on top. It turns out that now the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI are turning their attention to investigating extremist gamers. <laughs> With the help yeah. of important video game companies like Roblox, as well as Discord and Reddit, which they describe as a social media platform that is often used by gaming culture. Coordinating <laughs> with the FBI and the Department yeah. of Homeland Security to root out so-called domestic, domestic violent extremist content, according to a new government report, noting that mechanisms have been established with social media companies to police extremism. The report recommends that the national security agencies establish new and similar processes with the vast gaming industry. The exact nature of the cooperation between federal agencies and video game companies, which has not been previously reported, is detailed in a new Government Accountability Office report. The report draws on interviews conducted with five gaming and social media companies, including Roblox, an online gaming platform, Discord, a social media app commonly used by gamers, Reddit, as well as a game publisher and a social media company that asked the GAO to remain anonymous. 
Uh, Isn't that cowardly? Yes. I mean, there are video game companies that are remaining unnamed, they're remaining anonymous while working with the FBI to put their own customers in federal prison. Basically. I love the uh, I love the this the nebulous and just never ending bloat that comes from something like this. I still remember something from a couple of years ago about how the government uh, like awarded like seven hundred thousand dollars to fight online video game extremism. Yeah. But here's a good says the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Homeland Security have mechanisms to share and receive domestic violent extremism threat related information with social media and gaming companies. The GAO says the report reveals that the DHS intelligence office meets with gaming companies and that the companies can use the meetings to, quote, share information with INA, DHS's intelligence office, about online activities promoting domestic violent extremism or simply activities that violate the company's terms of service. Well, there's a lot of things that that could be beyond just, you know, threatening the fabric of Western society. Obviously, terms of service for private companies don't have anything to do with criminal offenses. Through its 56 field offices and hundreds of resident agencies, subordinate field offices, the FBI receives tips from gaming companies of potential lawbreaking and extremist views. That's a, that's a, just. Like, as, as a gamer, why would you patronize any of these huge companies like Blizzard or Roblox or any of these companies? anymore especially discord by the way which is a communication platform why would you patronize any of these private companies when they just admitted that they are trying to give tips to the federal government on your private communications based also, on your political yeah. beliefs i also love this part that basically says that they have no idea what they want or what they're doing the gao warns that the fbi uh. and the dhs lack an overarching strategy to bring its work with gaming companies in line with broader agency missions without a strategy your goals the agency may not fully be aware of how effective their communications are with companies the the left hand is talking to the right hand and neither we, one knows what the other one is doing the fbi is yeah. about as efficient as the dmv yeah. so or how effective their information sharing mechanisms serve the agencies uh, ser serve their overall missions it says the report ends with a recommendation that both agencies develop such a strategy a recommendation that dhs concurred with providing an estimated completion date of june 28th of this year all I can think about is the awful track record the FBI has when it comes to identifying extremism. Hassan Piker says. Why is Hassan Piker being cited here? They're much better at finding vulnerable teenagers with mental disabilities to take advantage of it, he says. I just don't. I don't even want to think about Hassan Piker. Let me turn all of your attention to another piece of this, which is so interesting. There is a nonprofit organization called Take This that actually happens to be funded by the Department of Homeland Security. And they are an organization dedicated to mental wellness in the gaming industry. I have no idea what that means. I guess when you get laid off from your gaming studio, uh, they're going to provide you therapy resources or something. So apparently they Gamer have Gate released, too. yeah, they have released an official press statement about Gamergate 2. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, and uh, here's what they have to say. If you're reading this, you've probably been hearing about what's going to be called Gamergate 2. It's the latest targeted harassment campaign in the game industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Inc., a Montreal-based narrative development studio. The campaign also has been impacting entities and games associated with Sweet Baby, journalists covering the issue, and others associated in various ways with the targets. You also may be at a loss to know how to talk about this issue and what, if anything, you can do about it. That's where we come in. Discord, Steam, and X have been the predominant platforms where the abuse and harassment has taken place. In these spaces, lists of game studios, companies, and organizations are being circulated for targeting by members of the mob. Large-scale harassment campaigns like this fuel and are fueled by political events. As, his, as political rhetoric heats up ahead of the U.S. presidential election this year, this kind of online activity is going to ramp up, and it's important to understand that these phenomena are, relate, are interrelated. Scholars and journalists have noted, the targeted harassment, hate, and cultural norms that were the heart of Gamergate in the mid-2010s never went away. People in game spaces, especially marginalized developers and content creators, face hate and harassment daily. In fact, 
Research conducted by Take This has outlined an entire spectrum and topology of extremism and dark participation in games that is bigger than any one movement but underlies all of them. It can be scary or uncomfortable to think about, to talk about, and to understand. In overwhelming situations, it's not unusual to feel at a loss or to have thoughts of helplessness. But there are things we can do to mitigate the harm. It is funny, too, because from what I remember, Sweet Baby Inc. isn't even an American company. I think it's Canadian. The Canadian, yes. Yeah. So, like, what does that even have to do with... <laughs> well, why is, you know why is American is, government involved? I think that this is a veiled threat where, you know, we're going to be campaigning for your social media platforms to be censored because, you know, the way that Gabergate kind of introduced the cultural environment for Trump to get elected... Mm -hmm. It's undeniable, right? I mean, would you agree with that? Yes. Oh, yeah. I just feel like Gamergate, weirdly enough, even though so many people haven't even heard of it, it really created at least the environment on the internet that we needed for the meme magic of the I Trump see, election. I don't, know if, I don't know if memetics even become as big of a part of culture without Gamergate. Right, exactly. I feel like it kicked off yeah. everything and, you know, butterfly, butterfly effect... And brought us to look, this point. And a lot of this is has to do with the fact that Sweet Baby Inc. is now campaigning against the Steam curation group that is Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, which just curates all the games in which Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on so that you as a consumer can know whether or not you want to purchase that game. And they've that worked sounds like freedom of association. Yep. That and, sounds and, like consumer power. And there are all these tweets from employees Chris Kindred and Maya Kramer that just that display that they are very much that there's a lot of racism that goes on there there's a lot of anti-white rhetoric obviously kim belair and dan better uh david better i'm sorry who are the founders of it have these statements the the idea that you can't be racist to white people which literally transported me back to the year 2018 hearing that phrase again which i haven't heard in a long time but uh, there's a lot of these tweets from them saying sorry no not no one thing has changed the number of people who understand the spreading mi misinformation just lets them be racist in public with no consequence has increased dramatic uh dramatically uh that has changed probably requires some fighting from those with authority probably this is all them discussing this situation uh for example steam doesn't have guidelines for curators as far as i can tell that would prevent someone from starting a curation group that focuses on say sweet baby inc and warns people not to buy their game they're associated with uh which could list games any game at all so they're saying like it could list any game not just games from sweet baby inc we got a 69 dollar super chat from jacob edler if Gamergate 2 actually becomes something big, you got to get Melanie Mack on the show ASAP and go on the offensive. Have a great week. RIP, Mr. Bocus. Rest in peace, Mr. Bocus. Rest in peace. And here are some more of the tweets. This is from Maya Kramer. Uh, Pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. Had a nightmare that I was a that, white male I gamer. thought that that was leading somewhere else yes. than, than the way it was yep. worded. Okay. Uh, then it says, I usually get grossed out when a straight white rich, when straight right, white rich people kiss, but even I think those two are pretty good. Thank you. One. You know, I feel like this is going to be, this is going to be the N-word tweets, but for woke people. Yeah. You know, like this is when you pull up the N-word tweets, except it's all of their tweets about hating white people because they felt culturally empowered to do so. Yep. And then it's going to backfire on you as it should. Yep. Chris Kindred says the steam curator harassment group, Sweet Baby Inc. detected a lead uh, by this person. Uh, it says, here's them trying to be uh, trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language uh, uh, filed off, the group itself still fails the code of conduct. Brett, I want to know, who do you think won the original Gamergate? Nobody. If anyone. I, 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 think, I think everybody loses in those situations. Because when we were talking about Comicsgate, I think with Shane Davis maybe, yeah. like, it seems like there is a definitive victory for Comicsgate and not for Gamergate. I and don't it, even know if that's true because that's that's its own offshoot and they have their own stuff going on there. I don't, it's like, difficult to tell. But I, I look at all these things and I, I don't see winners and losers. I just see gradual societal shifts for different groups of people. So certainly the, the mainstream comic book industry isn't doing all that well. Right? Yeah, but and, the difference is the mainstream video game industry is doing enormously well and better than Hollywood. Yeah. They're making more revenue than Hollywood. And... Uh, with less resources also being used. 
So there's a bigger stake here, but also it remains kind of still seen as a subculture. Yeah. Right? Hard, um, to, hard to think of video games that way with the hold they have on society. These days. Right. But I, I guess it's still kind of seen as part of like nerd subcultures, right? Yes. Like, I no, I don't. And think, it's I also really still, it I mean, statistically, it's male dominated. If you don't count Except mobile games, mobile gaming is, is it's more male dominated, yeah. as is YouTube, yeah. as is Twitch, yeah. um, as is, you know, people who go to see movies in theaters in general. Like entertainment is like for the consumers, it's male dominated. And it seems like they're kind of done being bullied. <laughs> there was uh, there was the quote from Kim Belair at an old speech where she says that white male gamers are basically like picky babies. And, and she's giving these speeches to like large groups of people, right? And, and they're like, or, or, yeah. or. And it's, yeah. it's hard to look at stuff like this. And again, I feel for all of these um for all of these groups, whether it's comics, whether it's gaming, whether it's even the dudes who, uh, the people who started the Fandom Menace, which was about Star Wars and all this stuff, a lot of it is is this cultural battle back and forth for people. And I, I really, at, at the end of the day, I feel like nobody ends up winning because I just saw a tweet from Neon um, on Twitter today. I, I reposted it. And somebody said earlier, I saw in the chat, I think, they said you guys should get Neon on here. They have a great, if you want a, a really good breakdown of the initial part of this story the, he did a 31 minute video on the clownfish tv channel about this that's really really good and certainly other creators there's i mean this material is dense and there's a lot to talk about here with people who are far more in it than we are but it is culturally relevant mm -hmm. and what he said was basically he says they want they want star wars without lucas they want uh harry potter without jk rowling they want um Lord of the Rings without, you know, Tolkien. And he's listing all these properties, right, that people want to control but not have the input of the original creators on. All of these cultures now are part of a world where they want to control it because it has social credit. It has a lot of push in society. Right. And they're not doing it for creative reasons. Certainly nothing being discussed here has anything to do with creativity or even good. what's good in gaming. It's all identity politics. Even just the idea that Sweet Baby was using cancel culture as a, you know, a fear tactic on their potential clients is so bizarre to me because they would, you know, over time see the example of Hogwarts Legacy mm -hmm. and they'd be like, oh, so everyone is going to be mad at us on the internet, but we're going to make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go with that outcome. Thank you very much. Like. What what is there to scare people with anymore? Like people aren't scared anymore. It's over. Like I think if all goes well, shit's gonna hit the fan, and you know these people who work at D DEI consulting firms and nonprofits dedicated to mental health in the gaming industry and inclusivity and blah blah blah. All of these people, you know, your time is up with the corporate card taking people to lunch. Like get a real job, provide value to society. You know, like you can't get retribution on the cool people forever move past high school <laughs> they're very uh, they're still getting revenge for being put into lockers seriously were... it's revenge of the nerds yep. that's like running society it really is uh which is it's also funny because they point out that the way they do so is very feminine it's the it's the threats and the whisper networks and the talking behind people's backs right, that they do right. this because they were probably actually like beat up by nerds or by by jocks and stuff when they were in school <laughs> the jocks yeah, yeah. It's cartoonish. All right, let's go to. All right, uh, all right. Cringe or cute? I think we do cringe first. Let's so, look at cringe first, yes. and then we'll look at Mr. Bocus. Okay, here we go. Cringe of the day. Mary told me not to watch this one before we got started. Let's see what it is. It says no way. Internet Hall. Oh, it's an Internet Hall of Fame video. Here we go. I'm definitely very into Asian men. What race do you think I am? White to Asian, maybe? I am Asian, actually. Oh. Yeah. Can we talk? Sure. Okay. <laughs> when you realize. Why, Nathan? I felt that it was something where I could become a really good friend with you. Yeah. That's just kind of a gut feeling for me. No, that's totally, totally valid. I'm definitely oh. very... Man, why did you make me watch that? It was, you can't deny it was cringe. Oh. It was cringe. Oh. That's the goal. That guy's, uh, he tried to let her down easy. 
Yeah, I mean, who wants to bet that they didn't stay friends? He's like, after look, that. I couldn't get my arms all the way around you. That's kind of a red flag and for me. He's like, when I can't touch this finger to this finger in yeah. a circle, yeah. it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Well, we've only got one cue to the day today, and that is, of course, Mr. Bocus. We are celebrating the life of Mr. Bocus. Um, I he, really wish that we could play Sarah McLaughlin right now. I know. I know. <laughs> that uh, would be perfect. It's very clear that Mr. Bocus touched quite a few lives because he is trending mm. on Twitter right now. What? Yep. That's crazy. I have uh, no idea. So Tim posted this tweet this morning. Uh, today is the last day for Mr. Bocus. Yesterday, he entered total renal fa failure and began deteriorating. After that, the ex post, this ex post will forever honor the legend of Mr. Bocus. Um, oh, I, sevens in chat for Mr. Bocus. I decided to post that. Like, I was like, look, I, literally my camera roll on my phone is like 90% pictures of Mr. Bocus. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Uh, I just decided to pick my favorite and then the last pictures that I that I got of him. So this is my all-time favorite picture of Mr. Bocus. He's in a I ever trash took. bag. <laughs> he is in a bag. Aww. Um, it's it's not trash. It's It's recycling. That's like the least menacing he's ever looked. It is, and it's it's a it's a beautiful photo of him. He looks yeah. wondrous and joyful. Cute. Uh, then there's this one. This was a fairly recent one. I love that one as well. And then there's this one. Yawning. Roaring. Well, he's. He, I'm gonna say roaring. He's roaring. He's roaring on top of the printer. He is where he where he spent so much time. Now and he's uh, on the big printer so in the sky. I decided to ask the people in the in in the in the company Slack. I said, "Would you send me your pictures of Mr. Bocus?" It was a deluge. It of was, pictures. and there were a lot. I believe Charles <laughs> sent this one. Well, that looks like Charles' hand. Yep. So. And I uh, cute. There's a there's a twenty dollar there from Boosted Yogi. It says, "Love oh. is blind, but has a weight limit." True. That true. is true. It does have weight. I thought you were saying Love is Blind, the show, has a weight limit. I said no. I, I didn't know that was That would be based if they did. Mm. All right. I got a cup. This one is from Kim. Oh. Checking out the eggs. Let's do a couple more here. Actually, we're going to do all this. So that's a good one. I think this one Handsome. is from Charles as well. It's very cute. I don't know where that is. Yeah. I don't oh, it's know in what the, that is. I, like, that looks like one of the bathrooms, but I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. He was just uh, out exploring. Uh, another $20 here from Bucky Ducky he says, here's one for Mr. Bocus. Uh, from, one bucko, from one bucko to another, he was a cat. May he rest. Yes. Rest in peace. He was definitely one of those cats. He was. Love Aww. that one. Cute. Does he have like a little scarf? Scarf well, on his there's, neck? There's more, than, there's more than one scarf Bocus picture here. Yeah. Um, Loved him with an ascot. <laughs> there's him. The sun made him very happy. Yes, he loved sunbathing. Those loved circle I, um, About 90% of my photos of him are him looking like the Firefox logo yeah. in, a, in a big circle. That's my favorite. Richie. Richie with Bucko. Luck, and, and look at the Ian picture behind them. <laughs> it's a vibe. Big yawn or roar, depending on uh, how you see things. Big stretch outside. Taylor sent this one in. I think Taylor sent this one, these three in here. It had been a while since I saw him outside. There he is in the sink. Cats love sinks. They do. Oh. Love this one. Is he in the skate park in this? I, th I think like so. Um, okay. I loved I loved his little um, his little ascot. bandana. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Sarah and Bocus making looks, loving eye contact. They love each other. I love this one. This is my favorite. <laughs> He's doing camera work. Uh, amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. It's Camera Cat. Yeah. Kara. Kara. With Bocus. Looks very happy. And let's Loves do, the chin scratches. Let's do one more here, guys. There he is. Aww. We miss him. It's uh, it's see he liked to deny it, but he was affectionate sometimes. He was. He well, you know, he's got to he's got to put have some bravado. He this was is, stoic. This is how strong. I will always remember him. Yeah, he was an amazing a cat. Sweetie. So rest in peace, Mr. Bocus. Rest in peace, Bucko. Uh, everybody here loved you, and you will be missed. Everyone, spam 07 in the chat for Bocus. <laughs> All right. Uh, with the somber stuff out of the way, I think it's time. And now that we're uh, 50 minutes into the show, Mary, yeah, we we're gonna go have to recover started. now. Yes, so it looks like Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan Tate have been arrested once again in Romania. Ironically, this has nothing to do with the case being made against them by the Romanian DICOT. This is from a charge, a warrant out for their arrest from the UK. 
over allegations that were made against them from back in 2012 to 2015, over a decade for some of these allegations. And they're br being brought up again after they were denied criminal prosecution, they are being brought forward again as a civil case. And the UK issued a warrant out for their arrest. Romanian government complied and decided that they wanted to extradite them back to the UK. But then it was kind of confusing. I think they made the decision to leave them in Romania until the conclusion of their criminal trial in Romania, which is still processing. Um, but yeah, this says a representative categorically rejects all charges. They remain in custody. Uh, Romanian police said two arrest warrants were issued by British authorities for, quote, exploiting people in the UK. These are sex offenses. A representative for the Tate brothers said this is a bewildering revival of decade, decade old accusations, leaving the brothers dismayed and deeply troubled. They categorically reject all charges and express profound disappointment that such, such serious allegations are being resurrected without substantial new evidence. They're fully committed to challenging these accusations with unwavering determination and resolve. And you can see in these videos and photos of them getting arrested, they are smiling at the cameras. Andrew Tate was like winking at the cameras, wearing this hoodie that says Top G. They were attempting to appear very nonchalant, unbothered, and jovial, um, lighthearted, you know? Um, but I think that some of the photos just kind of made them look a little bit more sinister than they than they wanted to. I think the main thumbnail from today definitely makes Tristan look that way. Tristan was, like, smiling with his, with his face yeah. turned down, like, I'm totally innocent, guys. Um, and uh, it turns out that, yeah, they're not being extradited to the UK anymore, at least... That's what it looks like as we're filming this. Who knows when we post this, if that's still gonna be true. But I think that we can all blame Twitch streamer Aiden Ross for this happening because he was cloud chasing off of Andrew Tate's name again. He was on a Twitch stream and he claimed that he got a text message from Andrew Tate claiming that he was intending to leave Romania forever and they should meet up to make some content before he leaves the country. So Romanian authorities were very alarmed by this, as were UK authorities, and that is why they issued the warrant for his arrest. There are, there are many people in the original Dexerto tweet that say this is more than likely fake, but it's funny as shit, so I don't know if that's true or not. Well, it looks like Aiden Ross deleted that clip, yeah. so he's kind of like trying to cover his ass, but basically the text that allegedly Andrew Tate sent to Aiden Ross says, hey, I'm gonna be leaving Romania soon, probably never coming back. If you wanna come over and do a week of long streams and content before I leave, I think it will be big. Doesn't make any sense because they- It's like, basically now or never. They love talk, I mean, they love being in Romania though. They've, they've talked endlessly about how much they, that, that's where they wanna be. They have, and that's why it's difficult to believe this is something exactly, Andrew Tate yeah. would say. But then again, why would Aiden Ross publicize it if it weren't true? You know? I know. And, I know. and it's so weird that these authorities in Romania and in the UK have nothing better to do than pay attention to like what Twitch streamers are saying about Andrew Tate. Yeah. Like if you, if you were planning to issue a warrant for his arrest, then you would have done that already, yeah. right? If this were really about public safety. But anyway, I wanted to go into the details. They call it on charges into the details. of sexual aggression. What is sexual yes. aggression? Yes. So I, I was confused about this too because the news coverage isn't naming the women. They're remaining anonymous. And I looked back because we've talked about this before. Who are the we BBC talking about? interviewed four women from the UK who made allegations against yeah. Andrew Tate from between the years of 2013 and 2016, which I guess could easily be construed as 2012 to 2015. So the headline from last year in 2023 says, Andrew Tate choked me until I passed out, UK woman claims. This woman is anonymous, but she's going by the name Evie. She claims that she first met Andrew Tate in a bar in Luton in England before he was an influencer with followers. She says he was working as a club doorman and she was a student. She says they had consensual sex and uh, before meeting him again at her flat later in 2014 in late November or early December, it was then a consensual sexual encounter and it became violent, she says. 
She says Andrew Tate, quote, put his hand on my throat and strangled me. Evie says that when she came around, it was a bit confusing at first, saying that he was, quote, still having sex with me. Evie, who is now 30, I assume she would be 31 now in 2024, claims Mr. Tate also subjected her to violent threats. He threatened to kill her, allegedly, until he left the following morning. He kept saying, quote, I own you. You belong to me. All throughout the night, he was being fairly aggressive and saying horrible things. The next day, she says uh, part of one of her eyes had completely turned red. Mm -hmm. She says she has other friends of hers she told about it at the time that can corroborate the story she told, but she didn't go to authorities. This she is, didn't all report of this it to is, the police all at of the this, time. All of these are civil suits that are being, he's being extradited this, for civil suits. These four women brought forward allegations for criminal prosecution, but a judge denied them the opportunity to criminally prosecute because they didn't have evidence. So he's being extradited so now, for civil suits, which yes. have a lower threshold of proof. Yes, exactly. So um, this is along with three other women in the UK that joined to plan a lawsuit against Andrew Tate back in 2023. They were interviewed by BBC. So together, they're pursuing civil claims for damages. The women, all in their late 20s and early 30s, alleged they were victims of sexual violence by Andrew Tate between 2013 and 2016 while he was living in the UK. So Evie, the anonymous woman, said, you're going to be held accountable for what you've done. And that was all in that BBC interview that I think we covered at the time. Yeah. Anyway, that's what that's about. So Candace Owens tweeted about this. She said, I don't care what you think about Andrew and Tristan Tate. Everything that's happening to them is an absurdity. A civil case from accusations made 10 years ago that were declined criminal prosecution by the UK courts, but then crowdfunded into civil prosecution is giving E. Jean Carroll vibes. That any civil case would constitute a middle of the night detainment in a foreign country is beyond absurd. It's criminal corruption. I'm honestly surprised that you would have the means or um, the justification to extradite someone yeah. outside of their resident country on claims, claims in a civil yeah. suit. Yeah. That's kind of insane. I mean, I know that people in the UK, like UK citizens have no civil rights and also Romanian citizens, they just are not precious about their civil liberties. And I understand that's a cultural difference, Who's but the, um... that's kind of what you give up when you're not in the u.s who is the celebrity we talked about recently that um i think it was diddy where a judge ruled that the accuser can't remain anonymous and has to come forward there was somebody we covered recently where they basically a judge said, yeah said ruled that, that? Like, they cannot be anonymous that they have to come forward um, for a criminal for trial a criminal or trial. okay yeah well, that makes sense. I yeah. mean, the same should be true for a, for a civil trial. Who, who is he paying if he doesn't know? Who is he theoretically paying in the civil suit if he doesn't know who the hell is, is suing him? Well, I, I assume that his lawyer would be made aware of the details and their identities, mm -hmm. but they're not wanting the media to find out who these women are for some reason. Um, it definitely seems shady, but also the Tate brothers seem shady. <laughs> to be honest like it was diddy it was it was uh yeah. the accuser can't remain anonymous the judge rules that was a week ago right um i i noticed that in these arrest photos andrew tate is making this bizarre gesture with his hands it looks like he he always does this this um it looks like this he it looks like and i said it looks like a goat's head when he's doing this mm -hmm. he does this when his hands are cuffed and he's done it before he consistently <laughs> makes this weird hand gesture and i asked the internet like why does he do this and someone responded to me that there's somebody in the hustlers university chat that teaches them neurolinguistic programming and kabbalah and it like has this secret meaning um i mean i i don't know all the details but i'm just saying like there are a lot of reasons to think that these accusers are shady there's a lot of reason to think that Andrew Tate is also a shady person um, and that you don't know the full truth about these people. A lot of people are going to have a, a, like the people who aren't like ideologically inclined to like or dislike him based on how they see the world are going to hear the idea of like, look, no names associated with it. What do you want me to do? I, I don't, I just don't know what you want me to, to say about it. If I, if he doesn't know who's accusing him, 
it's just hard. Well, he he's yeah. going to know who's accusing Eventually, him because yeah. his lawyer has to know. Yeah. So that's a given. But they just don't want journalists to know because they don't want journalists and independent people to be looking into this and doing their own research. Mm-hmm. I think that's really the the sketchiest part of this, of them deciding to stay anonymous. Um, I think that there is a video of him addressing this. The volume's really, really low. Post-release, the volume sucks. Uh, We've got the one from his lawyer, though. Yeah, his lawyer also did interviews. We can watch. Is the one from his lawyer in English? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we can watch that one. The other one, it would be almost un... Like, you wouldn't be able to hear it. So let's go ahead and listen to this one here. So he gave no, already same. some explanations about that. Audio is too bad. Um, some, can you resend me the one like of him, of, uh, of Andrew Tate? Well, unrelated, I'm sending you a link to uh, an interview that he recently did where he was talking about this arrest warrant, because that would make a lot more sense. I kind of find it interesting, even as we speak right now, and I'll say this publicly, as we speak right now, the UK is trying to put me in jail. England, because Romania has failed, so England has picked up. And England's coming up to me with all this garbage, and they're going to try and charge me soon with some imaginary crimes. Maybe it's why they'll drop the documentary. Well, there you go. Yeah. Of course, because you have to, you first you have to poison the public yep, mind. Yep, yep, To believe that you to are To believe this that, guy, right? Yep. So the UK is trying to put me in jail. And I'm saying this now on this podcast. Everyone, listen to me. The UK is coming next. Romania's failed. UK's picked it up. And as the UK try and put me in jail, I sit and I wonder. I say, imagine being a prosecutor. I probably shouldn't say this stuff, I'm still saying it. And you get paid, I don't know, three grand a month or whatever, two grand a month. And you're sitting there just looking through my whole life for months. Oh, he made money. Oh, that's a lot of money. That must be a crime. A Ferrari. Oh, that's a crime. Oh my God, and he has a nice watch. Crime. Like, and you're just sitting there. The obsession. And for like six months, just sitting there. Just unless the yeah. And like, it's kind of weird that there's all these full-grown adults with this much obsession making documentaries, trying to take me down, prosecutors in dark rooms mm-hmm. going through my life trying to take me down, ex-girlfriend blowing up my phone who I don't reply to anymore. <laughs> like, everyone's just like, uh, uh, it's weird. And I just wake up going, there's so many other people's lives which are just intertwined with mine or obsessed with the idea of trying to be involved in mine. It's actually very weird. I don't know who made that documentary. I don't care. I'm not going to watch it because it's garbage and my time is valuable and everything they produce is garbage. Yep. And the idea that they're going to say that trying to become significant in the world is a bad thing because they see it as chasing fame. No, I see it as becoming significant. Did Genghis Khan chase fame? <laughs> no. Uh, Sarah, so uh, we, got a, we got a we, message yeah, from Sarah. Have... She has cut in. She is, she is the Andrew Tate expert here, perhaps. We have an Andrew she Tate says, expert. Sarah says, uh, Andrew Tate got the hand symbol from his dad. There's photos of his dad doing it, too, who was also in the FBI, I believe. So people have theories about that as well. I'm watching PCC right now. Haha. <laughs> well, it turns out Emery Tate, Andrew Tate's dad, uh, he was in the CIA, yeah. according to Andrew Tate. That's not a theory. Andrew Tate claims his father was a CIA agent, excelling at everything he did within the industry. Bobby Broadway says, "Jail him for not dancing like Dancing Tate." Yes. Uh- Right, right. Where's Bottom G and all of Bottom this? Bottom G is the real reason that he. Yeah. I think that all they need to do to help Andrew Tate. Uh, beat these allegations is bring Bottom G into court, yep. have him go testify at the stand, and then just start like playing the music and he'll do his little dance. He'll do his little dance moves and then the judge will be like, all right, we're dropping this. Yep. We're dropping we're dropping your charges. It's over. <laughs> uh, allegedly Ruckus says, what kind of scalp cream does he use? Look, when he gets, it seems like every time they arrest him, they wait till his hair is kind of growing out a little bit. To make he was look- actually freshly shaved in, in these new photos. Was he? Yeah. Okay. In the old ones, he was definitely not. I do wonder um, if they were notified beforehand <laughs> that they were going to be detained. I bet you they weren't. Because like... It, that has happened where if you're if you're getting detained, they will warn you about it beforehand. Like Martin Shkreli, for instance, he got notified that the feds were going to arrest him. But Andrew Tate's last post on X says the Matrix is afraid, but I only fear God. There you go. Hope so it's the Matrix. As usual. The Matrix got him. 
Again. As it always does. Look, I just can't pretend to take any of it seriously. I don't take the accusers seriously. I don't take Andrew Tate's rhetoric seriously. It's clearly so bombastic and extreme. Mm. Like, I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. I've watched hours of this guy and I have no idea who he is. I mean, it's designed to be that way on purpose. I, I talk about uh, that a lot. Whenever, when, whenever his topics come out, so the, the problem with the internet is, is like by the time something like this comes out, there's 10,000 people in the comments giving you 10,000 different stories. And really, it just kind of proves that the, the, the reality of the world is whatever you make it. Like yeah. you, if you, you can't sit there and read the same comments forever. It's very hard without going in person to get actual verifiable proof about any of this. It just leads me to just being disinterested because I don't know what to believe. I do find a lot of his videos hilarious. I do find him uh, a gifted public speaker and uh, certainly is very good at drawing an audience to, you know, he's, sure. he's certainly very good at what he does. He's definitely talented and but, influential. And, and he's kind of the, and the, the support behind him, I think, is also a product of society's pushback against Me Too, meaning that we don't live in the age where people are just going to take claims at face value anymore. So if you're right. upset that he hasn't been, you know, wholly chastised by all of the world, you can kind of look back to the planet we've made for ourselves, or the world we've made for ourselves in the West here mm -hmm. since the Me Too movement in 2018 to see why that is. Right, exactly. So. I don't know. Ever since Chase um, Sovereign Bra and um, Donnie Darkened were on Culture War with mm -hmm. Tim those months ago, yeah. I've just been thinking more and more about it. Like there's this, this group of people, the elites, the establishment, and we see them as the establishment. And then there's this other group that we see them as the resistance. Yeah. And that's like, you know, that would may maybe include us in some tangential sense. That's like, you know, the thought leaders of the anti-woke yeah. thing. And there's Andrew Tate and there's Alex Jones and there's Joe Rogan and there's Elon Musk and Donald Trump and all of these people, Tucker Carlson. And there are these two like groups that are having this like culture war and I'm supposed to like- Choose a side. Pledge my allegiance to either side. And I think that both of them are kind of deceptive. Yeah. I don't know. That's just me being my conspiratorial self. All right, so chat. <laughs> Bucky Ducky said, happy Friday, Brett. Mary, why do you keep asking questions in your tweets when you don't read comments? Um, the truth is, oh, hold on one second. $100 super chat from Chris Noski said, in memory of Mr. Bocus, you will be missed. We miss Absolutely. you, Mr. Bocus. And thank you and thank for you, that. Thank you, Chris. Um, why do I keep asking questions? I get notifications from people I follow. Yeah. So if someone I follow comments on my post, I will see it. And I am genuinely interested in who you guys want to invite on the show. In the comments, go ahead, leave your suggestions, and I guess Brett will relay them to me. <laughs> Shanice Wilder said, <laughs> it's I'll do that. a not so happy Taco Tuesday, Brett and Mary. Uh, rec I, can't, I can't pronounce this. Uh, requiescat, requiescat in pace. Rest in peace, bucko. Sending my love and condolence. Do not talk to Seamus right now. We are not asking Seamus his opinion on Bocus. It's uh, not happening. Yes, we'll leave it alone. Shane H. Wilder said, Brett is not a normie. He is just as abnormie as the rest of us. Well, except for that one guy. He's just plain weird. We okay, talk to him. so I forgot. I, I, I made a poll today because we talked about it yesterday. I asked you, the viewer, I said, is, am I a normie? And the thing is, is Brett a normie? Uh, and so far, at this juncture... 55% of you say, yes, I am a normie. And th th thankfully, guys, I, I agree. So thank you for that. I disagree. Um, Brett is definitely not a normie. Um, hmm. If you are talking about stuff that happens on the internet every day, I'm sorry, but it's too late for you. You, you know everything now. DCNC said, good afternoon to my favorite pop culture journalists. Winky that's, face. Oh, I am a, uh, a deeply I've offended. Heard, I've heard one. Serenko Production said, RIP Bocus. Bucko was the best of us. He was. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's hold off on the rest and let's come back after the fact. I think you're going to need to tell everybody what the hell is going on with Lady Gaga. Yeah, uh, guys, it was recently International Women's Day, and I'm really ashamed that I didn't mention this on the show, but... I think we should mention it now because Lady Gaga posted a photo shoot with none other than Dylan Mulvaney in order to honor this national holiday. This is his post with Lady Gaga. Happy International Women's Day. 
with that little emoji that's like two girls dancing. Mm -hmm. You know that one? Um, I use that one all the time. Very weird pose, by the way. Lady Gaga is like, she looks like a tech CEO. Let's, uh, and then Dylan Mulvaney looks like someone who got kicked out of like a Vegas strip club. <laughs> like I'm not creeping dancing. over Lady Gaga's shoulder. I'm not dancing today in honor of Buckley. Okay. Do you do you have the post yep, here? Here we go. So here's it the just it's giving creepy vibes. Like why what is this pose? If you put your mind to it and you work hard and you never give up and you do not listen to the rejection, you can achieve anything that life throws your way. Like, I'm sorry, what does this have to do with women? I, uh, <laughs> it's the generic flowery language that dominates all discourse these days. And, you know, I'm looking through these comments on Dylan Mulvaney's post. I don't see hardly any negativity. I see one person saying this is so degrading to real women. I think that's the only <laughs> negative comment yeah. here. Um, but Lady Gaga apparently was appalled to see negativity from people who are not a fan of Dylan Mulvaney and made an entire essay in her next post to defend Dylan Mulvaney and essentially simp for Dylan Mulvaney in response. So here's what Lady Gaga had to say. Let me begin. <laughs> it's appalling to me that a post about National Women's Day by Dylan Mulvaney and me would be met with such vitriol and hatred when I see a newspaper reporting on hatred but calling it backlash, I feel it's important to clarify that hatred is hatred and this kind of hatred is violence. Wrong. So someone in the comments saying that they don't like Dylan Mulvaney and that this post is degrading to real women, that's violence, just so we're clear. So she Words continues. Words don't mean anything anymore. She continues. Backlash would imply that people who love or respect Dylan and me didn't like something we did. This no. is not backlash. This is hatred. So it's, it's hatred and it's violence and it's not backlash. It is not surprising given the immense work that it's obvious we still have to do as a society to make room for transgender lives to be cherished and upheld by all of us. I feel very protective in this moment not only of Dylan, but of the trans community who continues to lead the way with their endless grace and inspiration in the face of constant degradation, intolerance, and physical, verbal, and mental violence. Words are not violence. Sorry, what is verbal violence? Words are not violence. What is mental violence? Mental is not, you know, mental violence is not violence at all. Hatred isn't even violence. Physical violence is violence. Yeah. Violence is violence. Words aren't violence. How about me? I'm, <laughs> I'm like ambivalent. Is, is ambivalence violence? Is my, is my complete lack of interest in, their, in what they're doing violence too? Oh yeah, anything but blind uh, celebration affirmation. and affirmation and praise and basically worship, that's violence. Oh yeah, I forgot, I, somebody forgot, I, I forgot to make my yearly mention that uh, International Women's Day was a creation of the USSR. Oh yeah, a few people know this. Yep. Yep. I like, thank, thank you, Corey Anderson. You're like, wow. Uh, we're going to read I didn't that know one now. That. Uh, I, I mentioned that last year. I forgot to mention it this year. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, was it Stalin was the one who uh, introduced, or was Lenin? It was Stalin, I think, it was, was Stalin, the one yeah. who uh, brought us International Women's Day. Thank uh, you, Stalin. And, um, Feminist icon, Stalin. <laughs> also remember, so uh, silence is also violence. So you're not allowed to be silent about it either, which would right. be me most of the time. Yes. So I can't really, really win in this situation. So you're violent, hateful, and a bigot because you didn't leave a heart emoji and on, I don't care. in the comments and because i don't care yeah 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 you should care um she continued i certainly do not speak for this community but i have something to say i hope all women will come together to honor us all for international women's day and may we do that always until the day that all women are celebrated equally that all people are celebrated equally. I want a day to... where people of all gender identities are celebrated on whichever holiday speaks to them because people of all gender identities and races deserve peace and dignity. So it, we won't have equality until everyone gets a holiday, basically. I would like That's her, the benchmark. I would like her to distribute all of her wealth 
to all, not even all of the women in the world. I would like her to evenly distribute all of her wealth <laughs> equally amongst all the women in the United States to bring all of us just, uh, not even the men, all of the <laughs> women and the trans women just a little bit closer to equal. Let's see. Her estimated net worth as of 2021 is 320 million. Perfect. So there's, not, there's not even 320 million women in this country. So that's like $2 a woman. That's just some some formidable UBI. You so I'm waiting for my Lady Gaga check in the two, mail. Your $2 Lady Gaga check to make yeah. you equal with her. I'm waiting. Um, she finished the post. May we all come together and be loving, accepting, warm, welcoming. May we all stand and honor the complexity and challenge of trans life that we do not know, but can seek to understand and have compassion for. I love people too much to allow hatred to be referred to as backlash. People deserve better. End credits. The, um, the inability to let words mean what they're supposed to mean is annoying. The, the fact that the internet has created a world where everybody lives in this bubble of flowery language and platitudes, which don't mean anything, not really. Internet backlash is yeah. not violence. Silence is not violence. Not having an opinion on something is not violence. Not blindly affirming something is not violence. And the inability to let that word mean what it's supposed to mean because you feel some sense of uh, a desire to protect these, uh, like these people is kind of strange to me. But, you know, they come from a different, a different group, right? Like Hollywood does kind of live and breathe and exist in platitudes. And kumbaya, we have to all just get along. And that, you know, that kumbaya, we have to all just get along mentality, which anybody in the real world understands isn't really how things work, I guess. Uh, it's a product of being a celebrity in a bubble. I think that more so than the celebrity has to and do with feminism. it, this is the way that a woman speaks when she is 37 and childless. Think so? Honestly. No. Um, if the, you... the mothering instinct that would normally be redirected towards her children has been yeah. moved to, yeah. Like, unfortunately, uh, Lady Gaga's maternal instincts and her femininity, it's been hijacked by media indoctrination, social media affirmation for espousing these delusional beliefs. Yep. I think that her surrogate child is this community that she feels bizarrely attached to. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but Lady Gaga for a long time has been specifically like loved by the gay and trans communities. Like they love Lady Gaga. They're the people in the comments calling her mother. They're literally calling you mother and you are treating them like they're like your children, like your surrogate children, because you have none of your own. Yeah. And you feel like the, these are these downtrodden, marginalized people who are disadvantaged and you just are reaching out to them in loving acceptance and they need you and that makes you feel good about yourself but it's a completely misdirected instinct it's a good instinct but it's being totally hijacked there's a 20 dollars one from roman nation i believe that we missed did we get oh, that one? sorry about that r.i.p mr bocus as far as andrew tate is concerned the powers that be have already played their hand they will probably just pay them out to make it go away well that seems to be what the uh <laughs> accusers want anyway <laughs> um but it's interesting that, you know, Dylan Mulvaney didn't need to say anything. Dylan Mulvaney didn't stand up for himself. He, you know, mobilized yeah. Lady Gaga, this person with a huge platform and thousands of her supporters to essentially be his mercenaries. It's funny. I've been like, I'm going to equate it back to the show that I've won, been watching called Third Watch. There's this character named Doc. And he's been an EMS worker for 15 years. And he's, uh, he's very big in, in social causes. And one of the things that he's constantly criticized for is that he gets involved too heavily in these people's lives, mm -hmm. right? They're like, it's good to care, but there is such a thing as like inserting yourself where you're not really needed or wanted. Oh, right? yeah. And it's, it's also like 
not compassionate to someone to make them your project. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what this comes in the show is like is like people are like, look, it's good that you that you care about these people, but sometimes and there's <laughs> multiple situations. Thank you. There's multiple situations where it goes too far and it causes problems. Right. And that's what it feels like a lot of it is is like for a lot of celebrities, you know, they've got the time, they've got the money. Um, maybe no as many not as many family ties and, and they attach themselves to these social causes this will only get worse as more and more young celebrities identify themselves as activists rather than human beings most of the time you know mm -hmm. it's just gonna be worse it's just insane that you know there are so many women in the world who actually are marginalized yeah. and actually do need someone with a platform to speak up for them or you know, call for change in yeah. those cultures. And instead of talking about any of that, let's talk about this mega rich Dylan Mulvaney who became famous and got a bunch of brand deals off of dressing up like a little girl and running around in a public park in high heels. Mm -hmm. Like, is this now the face of women's empowerment and women's rights and equality? It's just so embarrassing. Like I get secondhand embarrassment from watching this. Anyway, let's go to Super Chats. Corey Anderson said, Mary, did you see that the red haired thought from whatever pod got baptized? I saw it on a Brett Cooper short, I believe. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that. I mean, I hope it's not some kind of troll, you know, like engagement farming. There's a $20 super chat here from Bullet Shepherd says, Mary, I'd have to disagree. Even the celeb mothers support the, the tea nonsense as seen by their, quote, need to change their own kids. It's just evil, nothing less. Yeah, I mean, I think that Lady Gaga not having children of her own, it plays into it, but it's not telling the whole story. Because, like, look at Megan Fox, look yeah. at Charlize Theron, look at Angelina Jolie, I like, or no, um, Madonna. Like, any of these celebrities who have their own kids, yeah. they definitely, you know, make their kids into pawns for activism. Um, but still, nonetheless, their, their maternal instincts are also getting hijacked. Um, Corey Anderson said, Mary, I DM'd you the link if you're interested on X. Okay, I hope this isn't something sketchy. <laughs> Jeez. Francisco Sanchez Jr. said, Brett, one day it will be Tuesday, but not today. It Hello, is Mary. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. I know this. Stop gaslighting him. Wednesday, we have Sarah on. Thursday, we have another guest. Fridays, we have another guest. I always know when it's at least Monday or Tuesday. Shani Twilder said, Gamergate 2.0 Electric Boogaloo is in open beta. Can't wait. It's going to be great. The memes will be fantastic. You sound dejected. Yeah. Let's do one more. Okay. Um, Bucky Ducky said another gaming related topic with no Sarah. Well, well it's not spelled Shara yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't know if she pays attention to like gaming industry news or if she's just into like playing them, which would be the healthy thing to do. It would be. <laughs> it really would be. That's, that's a but, fair point. But, you know, I, I would ask her. It's just that she would say, oh, yeah, maybe. Mm. And then I would not hear anything else. Let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back after the fact. It's time to okay. discuss whether or not Hannah Barron, yeah. a.k.a. Catfish Girl, is in fact a PSYOP. That is the question, isn't it? Yesterday we were talking about this viral feud that went down on X between Samira Khan, a former pageant winner, and Hannah Barron, who is the Catfish Girl. She's getting called the Catfish Girl now because she makes all this content about the outdoors. She's a country girl. She likes hunting. She likes fishing. She likes building houses with her dad. It's all very wholesome. But now a bunch of crazy people on the platform are convinced that Hannah Barron is actually a planned psyop that has been foisted upon us and um, follow the money or something like that. So here's this picture of Hannah Barron um, dressed up as Lara Croft from I Tomb the, Raider. I love the community notes. It's However, <laughs> they think that here she is posing as Baphomet because she has her fingers in this pose like Baphomet. And um, they put it at this brick wall, which proves that she is a Freemason 
and she's part of the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. Path of Plumber sent a $20. Why isn't Brett on the left? I can't deal. <laughs> Wait, I, is, uh, they is it different than usual? Uh, no, no, it's it's the same as, as usual. Are they saying that What's it's the because, issue? Okay, he, here's the thing. Remember when uh, we had the, um, I did a meme, like, the, like the, I never make memes. I reshare memes all the time, but I did a, a meme where it was like uh, Tiffany Gomez and that other lady who had a freak out on the plane. The one who Wait, uh, there was another the there was like a lady in a bodysuit that had a freak out on a plane. Oh yeah, 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 I ugly. remember her. I put which way Western men, and they were like, "Why didn't you put Tiffany Gomez on the right?" Because they're like, I guess the idea being that she would be the right wings version. Do you understand what I'm saying here? They were equating right with like the good choice. Uh, they were like, I should have put her on that side. I'm like, I didn't think that deeply about it. Yeah, I, guess I don't know. They're either. probably saying that I like as somebody who's who leans more left, I should be on the left side. Oh, like you would, yeah. you would pick the, um, or no, you're the which way Western man on I the guess, left. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, Camelot's in the chat. He says, when I realize my home is a Freemason. Yes, buddy, you're, uh, you're home. If you've got brick yeah. in your home, it's, you're, you're a Freemason. If you've ever stood in front of a brick wall and yeah. had a picture taken, that means you're a Freemason. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but that's just the truth. Um, As above, <laughs> so below. It says, in this image, Hannah Barron is wearing an outfit commonly worn by Laura Croft from the popular franchise Tomb Raider for Halloween and posing mm -hmm. with finger guns. It has nothing to do with anything satanic as implied by the picture next to her uh and the rest of this post stop making sense <laughs> stop speaking logically the other thing that they they point out is that she uh she was is also associated with black rifle coffee company which a lot of people on the right do not like because they give to de to democrat politicians and also they they kind of threw kyle rittenhouse under the bus when they went mainstream yeah they also had an ad with like drag queens i think yes so she's had brand deals with them right that is not yes but this is not the most ridiculous of thing this is the one that i thought was the funniest it says hannah hannah Baron flashing the devil horns. Yes, that's what she's doing. It's not because she listens to Def Leppard or rock music. It's because she's letting you know that she's, you know, a devil worshiper. Are, like are we, we said, getting trolled right now? Are we getting trolled? I hope so. If, if so, this is awesome. I But I honestly can't tell anymore because I feel like people on right wing Twitter are like... Okay, in terms of what gets media coverage, right-wing Twitter is what's on the radar for me for media outlets to cover things that happen like on this sphere of things. But people who are inside it, they have no idea how mm -hmm. insulated they are. This woman had 1.5 million followers yes as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. She has been famous on Instagram and TikTok for years now, posting all of the same content. She's not a PSYOP. You just didn't know about her because you are in your own insular online community. Not everything that you haven't seen before is a PSYOP. Uh, the person says, this post is for entertainment purposes only, by the way. This, there is no defamation. So they're saying that, uh, I guess it's a liability concern. I'm guessing that her lawyer reached out. <laughs> uh, uh, Furby Slayer says, it's called it marketing. It's always been a PSYOP. What, so you think that this is a var, uh, like a viral guerrilla marketing campaign started by Hannah Barron in collaboration with Samira Khan, or these companies who insulted her, yep. and um, they were actually in cahoots to get Hannah Barron more followers. So Lo-Fi Republican uh, is another account on Twitter that was talking about this. Says this is Anth uh, Oliver Anthony levels of astroturf. Uh, Oliver Anthony on steroids levels of AstroTurf. They're saying that her father follows a bunch of FBI field office accounts, mm -hmm. right? That is really weird. Yeah. That that yeah. alone, it's kind of weird that you're following all of these FBI, FBI accounts. I, I do. Like, like, one thing I, I would say is like they, they, they posted like a bunch of her likes on here. I can't confirm whether any of them are real or not because her old account was suspended. I don't know if they got them off the Wayback Machine or how this was how this was gotten. Um, Here was her rebuttal. She said, I had 2.4 million on Facebook, 1.4 million on Instagram, 700K on Facebook, and 2.1 million on TikTok before all this Twitter stuff started. I had a video in 2016 go viral catching a catfish with my hands. That's why people refer to me as the catfish girl. I've also been on a few TV shows over the past few years. Just because I didn't have one social media platform doesn't mean I didn't have a following before today. Just Google my name. That would be the common sense conclusion, yep. but you're not going to find that. Um, this is what I mean. Normies don't have Twitter. Normal people don't have or use Twitter. They don't. Yep. Like, this is why Brett's not a normie. You're an abnormie. 
you, I'm I'm convinced at this point. If you're active, if you are an active Twitter user, especially if you um, have a blue check, which no shade, I have one. Here's the you're uh, not a here's normie. The, um, here's the follower list. FBI Anchorage. What does he need to do with the FBI Anchorage field office? What is this? Yes. Like, is it? Do you think her dad works for the FBI? I have no idea. And also, even if her dad worked for the FBI, mm -hmm. that wouldn't make her a Fed. Uh, these are some of her dad's uh, li like reposts they're showing here. I saw that she was following a bunch of right wing people like Steven Crowder and. I mean, that's what Tiffany Gomez did as soon as she got her set up her Twitter account after yeah. her viral moment. She immediately started following Tim and, and all of these different people in Barstool, which is more normy, I guess. But uh, I didn't even know Barstool has an, a, a Barstool outdoors yep, like that. outlet, I yep. guess where they just do content about the outdoors and then they cover this girl. Like, what haven't they done? <laughs> so this is uh, Middle Maga who's been on here. We, uh, Middle Maga, you know, friend of the show. Yeah. It says, follow the money. GM, friends. I, uh, this is another account. Has, says, uh, it says, I cracked the case. The whole tomboy argument between the Lebanese clown and Hannah was just a marketing bait to get more attention towards their brand. So they're saying that this is a Black Rifle Coffee Company that is behind all of this. I'm picturing a shadowy cabal of coffee drinkers in a room. They're sold in Walmart. Yep. I, just, I was we were just there the other day and uh, I I saw that there was Black yeah. Rifle coffee in the in the Walmart. I don't think that they need a bunch of right-wing Twitter schizos to go buy Black Rifle coffee. Yep. Um <laughs> whatever. I mean, I just think that people are like losing their minds and losing their grip on reality. I, they're I, they're well, doom scrolling too much. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing. Is like if you spend too much time online, you'll start making connections everywhere. But then again, Mary, we could absolutely be wrong, and maybe this you know is what? the greatest viral marketing <laughs> campaign of all time. Any minute now, Shane Cashman is going to say that this lady is AI generated. That's, she never existed in the first place, possible. and then she's going to do a collab with Tiffany Gomez. That's <laughs> And then she well like look uh, Tiffany Gomez has been posting a bunch of videos recently of her going to the range and learning how to shoot. So what she's gonna do next is she's gonna go Ooh. learn how to catfish, how, how to how to fish for catfish, and that's gonna be great. It's, yeah, it'll be noodling season for Tiffany well, Gomez. Well, obviously Barstool is going to arrange their collab yeah. for content. It's gonna be perfect. Uh, Phil Labonte got in on this discussion. He says Twitter is full of conspiracy brain people that believe everything is a psyop. This is not to say that there are no psyops, but if you think everything is a psyop, you'll never you'll never accomplish anything because what's the point? It'll just be co-opted by the enemy and used as another psyop. Okay, psyopception. Even though I've been counter signaling this whole time, um, don't let that keep you from buying our everything I don't like is a psyop merch on the Teespring link in bio. Uh, um, uh, it's at uh, what this shirt right here. Yeah, that shirt. That could be it. That's one hundred and ten percent possible. It's now available. Here's the thing. on the Teespring. Here's the thing, though. You like Hannah Barron, yep. so she's not a psyop. Don't. She's ex extremely likable, sweet, pretty. Lovely person. If I was to if I was to work on their side of the argument, I'd say, look, that that speech she gave addressing this concern was pretty well done. There was no editing. There was no cuts. Speech. She's she's well, it, well, what would you call it? It's a speech. I, it's not that hard to talk a, to a, a camera a, for a minute and a half. It's a, it was likable. She comes off as very very warm, inviting. It was very very good. Therefore, it's a psyop. Okay, so I guess now we have to make more says rifle, everything I black, like is a psyop. Black off. Rifle Coffee Company paid for her to get media trained so that she could do all of this so they could sell more $30 bags of coffee. Confirmed. By the way, I, uh, I've i tried Black Rifle Coffee. It's not very good. <laughs> uh, now they're saying Mary is a psyop. You're, you're, a, you're a psyop. That's the thing. If you're accused of being a psyop, like, what do you do? Yeah. What can you say that will make people think you're not a psyop? You Nothing. Can't. It's unfalsifiable. It's like you can't get out of it. Yep. If you're accused of being a grifter as well, you literally can't prove that you're not. Yep. It's impossible. So I don't know. I think that this girl will be vindicated in the end. And well, in the end, the, I think the question is, I think does, the, does the, does the public profile and the fame raise high, you know, raise higher and faster than the claims made against her, right? Eventually you reach a level of, of fame and followers that it doesn't matter what people are saying. I think what makes people feel like something is a psyop is like how quickly it enters your timeline and then leaves forever, like vanishes. Yeah. Oliver Anthony did that. Yeah. He just, he just showed up on like your first Twitter, then it was mentioned in the GOP debates, his song, 
And then he just is like gone. Yep. Like he just left. He's he's vanished. I have not heard anything about him or well, from there him. Well, there was the there was all the the hullabaloo around him in the venue when he canceled yeah. the show because of the pricing yeah. and stuff like that. That was uh, maybe one of the cringiest things ever was watching like like boilerplate establishment Republicans try to relate to Oliver Anthony's song, it which so just lame. made me laugh. Yeah, it was so cringy. All right, well. let's uh, let's do these super chats then, Mary, and then I guess we'll hang out. Um, I actually got signed out of the Super Chat spreadsheet. Oh, uh, you can just log back. Oh, yes, yeah, you can't log back in there, actually. All right, uh, we'll, we'll go back up here on the, on the list. Where did we, do you remember what we left off at? It was the Love is Blind, but it has a weight limit we'll have Super to find Chat. that one up here. Oh. I'm back in the spreadsheet. Got it? All right. Yes. Um, Brewmaster Monk? Was it that? Oh, okay. The tape rows are some sort of intel assets. Their dad was CIA. They could have been targeted to smear the CIA. Regardless, their influence is negative. Yeah, but what a movie it would make. <laughs> I don't know. Is it really? I mean, are even the Tate brothers psyops? Yeah. They, everything's a psyop, Mary. Can everything stop being a psyop for a second, for like two seconds? I don't think so. That I can will be like allowed. get some solid ground. Well, I mean, that, that's the whole point of that type of discourse, right, is it makes the world feel very, very, like, wavy underneath your feet. It makes it hard to hold on to anything at all when yeah. nothing feels real. High Voltage 75 said, how old was Bucko? How old was he? Uh, I do not know. I, I do not know exactly how old he was. I, I think somebody said he was six in the chat earlier, but I have no confirmation of that. He was just the right age, okay? <laughs> he was perfect just the way he was. Uh, I remember his brief PCC appearance on episode 400 when he got startled by the money guns. R.I.P. Little guy. That is true. That is, I forgot about that. Um, um, yeah, twenty dollar one here from Mikey. Shoot, a pretty girl exists. Psyop. Yeah. Psyop. You can't. People can't enjoy things. Never. Chris Noski, or I'm sorry, um, Shadow Zero said, "Did this fool just compare himself to the world's most notorious rapist?" Wait, what? Uh, Genghis Khan. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I, even just in terms of clout and influence, you're definitely not close to Genghis Khan, dude. They said Tim said he was six this morning. Okay. Uh, speaking of everything as a psyop, I have just sent it in the chat below. You know, if you in fact in case you like to, want that T-shirt, if you wanted that, I mean, I, I can't say you shouldn't buy it. So you know. it's uh, you PCC know. is a psyop. We're just CCP backwards. Bucky Ducky said, "Okay, Mary, Wendigoon, get him on. It will be fun." We have wanted to get him on the show, um, but you know, I'm sure he's a really busy guy. Um, I'll, I'll try to reach out. Corey Anderson said International Women's Day is a communist holiday invented by the USSR. Correct. Colin, your buddy, said RIP Mr. Bogey Boo. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Best of boys, as far as Dylan Mulvaney is concerned, I reference the Simpsons. Just don't look. Treehouse of Terror 6. The people stop looking at the mascots that came to life. Problem is that they're, that's not possible by society, right? Especially when they're being attached to major brands like, what was it, Adidas as well as Bud Light and all of these other companies. Uh, but not just that, but also major celebrities like Lady Gaga. Was it Adidas or was it, what was it? Like, she, like Dylan Mulvaney got like an activewear brand sponsorship. Do you remember that? What, like Lululemon or yeah, something? Yeah, but I don't remember what company it was. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, when they're attached to major celebrities, there's nothing you can do. Like, people are just going to see it, and there's really no way to fight back against that. The don't look mentality works for you or I, but for the people who aren't, and I guess this is my argument to me not being a normie, um, like the average person is just not going to know not to look. See, you're not the average person. Okay, here's Rex. my argument for the, for the normie, uh, for me. So, so when I use that phrase, I talk about fandoms a lot, right? I talk about Star Wars fandom, comic book fandom, um, okay. All of these different groups And I've never considered myself Really all of that much of an expert On much of anything Therefore I am not uh, I, I am not part of a major fandom Therefore I am a normie Okay Therefore I'm a normie That's not what normie means though In this context Like that's not the context that normies is I'm saying it from. was Nike not Adidas Thank you guys Oh okay um, Like normie isn't about fandoms It's about basically how online are you 
I think that's that's the benchmark. Well, the like, day that this, the day I don't work at this job anymore, I go right back to being. Well, that's a normie. the thing. You can't you can't go back. Oh, you can you can only not be a normie anymore. That is. You can't go back. You think that I? It's I, permanent. I, I'm just like uh, I stay permanently on the internet forever. I can't just. Doesn't matter if you throw away your phone and you don't have internet access for the rest of your life. You still can't be a normie again. Ugh. There's no going back. That's too bad. Shani Twelders. That's, really, that's more depressing than I can express to you. Okay, I just ruined your day. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Shani Twelder said, you pronounced Re Requiescat correctly, Mary. I hope I said it right that time. I don't know. Bucky Ducky said, I would ask her, then do it, you little goober. I have no idea what that means. Wait, what? Sarah? I have asked her plenty of times if she would like to guest on the show. I know that you guys have been asking, but she doesn't. I don't know. I guess she just doesn't want to. Uh, so I'm not going to force someone to be on the show if they don't want to. Um, wait, I just saw a great one here. Um, heavy, uh, heavy Hebrew says, is Brit normie adjacent? I like that. Can I be normie adjacent? What would make you normie adjacent? I have no idea. I just am. Okay, you can tell yourself that. I see. That's fine. Look, I, so I you can also, go ahead and, and tell yourself I that. I saw like, somebody earlier say, like, Brett's not a normie, but he doesn't have any strong opinions. I like that. That's right. Team, no strong opinions over here. I'm am, like, my, my, my life is goal that like is, something that you should be proud I, I don't of? Care. I'm ambivalent. Uh. I'm ambivalent. Uh, like, if I had a, mo a, a motto in life, it would be, it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> Sounds a little bit nihilistic to me, but. It's not meant to be. Uh, Carnell said, next thing you know we'll have to suffer through is Dylan Mulvaney as Harley Quinn in the next People's Joker. Yikes. That's totally plausible. Ugh. Don't even want to think about that. Shane H. Wilder said, thank you, Mary. We must make Abnormie a thing. I like it. There you go. Mikey said, um, or sorry, Corey Anderson said, can we get a Mary Brett Cooper collab? Who knows? You'd Who knows to... what the future holds? Could happen. Nate said, I think... Cultural things that linger around are more likely to be plants. Oliver Anthony seemed more genuine to me because it was a flash in the pan. Yeah, I mean, that, that's actually a fair argument, right? The fact that it didn't okay. uh, skyrocket him up the charts and make him like an international star to a, a greater level means that it really was, you know, the fleeting success that comes from having that moment of virality. That's a good point. Yeah, I like it. Wonder what he's up to. I, that, that, I mean, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna see like what are his vi like what are his videos doing these days? If he's even posting at all. Yeah. High Vulture seventy five said, Brett, if Mocha, heaven for forbid, passes away, will she get a tribute on PCC? Um. Okay. So here's the deal. At one point, <laughs> at one point, it was possible that uh, Olivia wasn't going to be able to keep Mocha. She was gonna have to. She wasn't gonna be able to bring her with when she moved. And I said, only then will I feature Mocha on Cute of the Day. Since that didn't happen, I guess I could acquiesce if it was if I needed to. That if something happened to him down the line, hopefully old age. We're gonna <laughs> knock on wood and say old age at the ripe <laughs> age of like a million lives forever. Then yes, I will feature an in memoriam. That's lovely. There you go. Bury the hatchet. Uh, Oliver Anthony right now with his 1.23 million subscribers. Let's see what That's his... That's crazy. Uh, yep. Uh, I wonder if we can look... I want to go to his channel directly so that we can Is he actually, making music still? Looks like he is. Um, Oliver Anthony Music. His videos. His last video um, was four days ago. Uh, and it has 243,000 views. Hmm. Before that, he has... Let's put this on screen there. Uh, building a hunting blind in the woods it has 160,000 views and then something from the new year and then him finding hope and hopeless in a hopeless world with Jordan Peterson did 73k that's all it did oh he was on Joe Rogan oh yeah yeah that was the big thing I don't thing. even remember although that. what people were saying is like he ended up on Joe Rogan and then just kind of disappeared <laughs> um debuts the bible before grand Ole Opry i can't ago. even imagine someone as private as him talking on camera for like three or four hours that's kind of crazy i mean that's it's, it's crazy what joe rogan's job is really to like plumb <laughs> your your brain and like pull things out of you but make you think that you're just like chatting yeah. <laughs> um bucky ducky said i guess she will never be on pcc l shara moment <laughs> um i mean if you ask her maybe that would work mm -hmm. Um, Pat the Plumber, Oliver Anthony canceled himself by saying he didn't want to be on either side. His loss. 
RIP Mr. Bocus, love and prayers to the cast, especially Ian. Wait, does that mean that I canceled myself as well because I don't want to be on either side? Have I preeminently, like, like. Well, nobody, like, went to you and tried to force you into a certain box. Like, no one wanted you to be. I do find a, a right to, wing influencer. I was on, uh, I, I, th- I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday. I was on Ballers with Shane and Mandy on Friday and like they, they showed this video of Trump and I, I, all I did was like slightly critique some of his statements. Can't do that. Which I was like, bro, he's, he's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to send the, the national guard into woke cities. I'm like, bro, you wouldn't even do that during the riots in 2020. You asked permission. So Sorry if I don't 100% believe you. And I, I, I'll vote for the guy if I, I mean, I'm not really a fan of voting, you know, you know me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if I did, I would vote for him. But man, if you have even the slightest critique of anyone, both sides tend to rake you over the coals. Shane H. Wilder said, Normie adjacent sounds gay. <laughs> <laughs> Just embrace your abnorminess, Brett. We're fun people. Slightly tarted, but fun. Does that sound good to you? Sure. You're accepting your abnorminess? Uh, yes. The Manic Mustache said, Theo Vaughn has a tribute song to Hannah Barron. I can't find it. Somebody's going to have to send it to me. Oh. I put Theo Vaughn, Hannah Barron song, and it says, Hannah Barron song by Lil Browse and somebody else. I, I don't want to get YouTube copyrighted today. I'm not okay. in the mood. <laughs> Mr. Anderpson said, hats off to Chris Lund- Lunsford. Oliver Anthony for not being drawn into the BS political posturing refresh refreshing when someone doesn't kneel to either side. I agree to me personally. I agree. I, I, the, the unfortunate side of that means that you don't get the, the public exposure. And as long as that's what you you're okay with that, that's fine. seems like he honestly never wanted it in the first place. I don't blame him. High Vulture 75 said, if you want to get Sarah on, put down a trail of ketchup chips leading up to the PCC studio. I, is she like particularly obsessed with I have ketchup no idea, chips? But we could do that, right? We could do that right now. We could do that, but I think it would just make a huge mess. <laughs> so maybe we should come up with another strategy. Um, are there any more? No, we're just gonna hang out until. Okay. Oh no, there's one more. Uh, oh, they say Lil Browse is it. Uh, Nate says Lil Browse is it. Uh, I wonder if we'll get copyrighted for it. Uh, but we'll check on it and we'll maybe do it tomorrow. I just. Today's just not the day for me. I don't have to. <laughs> Today's not the day. Earlier, I, you were kind of like freaking out. I'll have to. I'll have to sit here for like two hours after the fact. We'll have to. We'll have to um, dispute the claim, and then you can't put. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Are you uh, excited for American society? <laughs> I'm not, yes, guys, we are going to go review that's in a couple days. The, uh, the American Society of Magical, you know what. On on Thursday night, magical boops. Yes, yeah, swear magical swear words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I do like this one. Uh, Chili uh, Peen says <clears throat> Brett knows the correct way to fold a chip bag. So recently, I have experienced chip clips for the first time in like ten years, and it's been the greatest thing ever. You know, it's the clip you put on it to keep it from. I mean, that is really the conscientious way to close your your chip bag. Normally, I would use rubber binders or. Eat all of them at once. Yes, like a normal person. It's like the uh, the the memes. It says like uh, men everywhere, where they 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 get the the twisty tie, they fold the bread, and they throw the twisty tie away, and they fold it under the bread, and they set it on top. I thought everyone did that. Yeah, but... they, uh, some people say that's apparently men. Uh, Bucky Ducky said, "Mary, how about you go on Gamer Maids? Then she has to come on PCC." Brett, you too. They do plenty of retro stuff. I know you're busy, but one of these days. Okay, there's a there's a disparity here, right? Because when we're done with PCC, that's normally the end of our workday. But for Sarah, that's in the middle of her workday, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm usually already commuting home during Gamer Maids. Yep. So it's a bit it's a tough sell, okay? Just on the off chance that she's actually gonna return the favor and guest on PCC. I don't know. I think we could get... Uh, it's not necessarily a gamble I want to take. Do you think we could get Hannah Barron on here? I was thinking about it, but I was like, ugh. Like, she would probably think we're insane. I like, could so, ask. Uh, I heard you're uh, a disciple of Baphomet, right? Thoughts? Thoughts? Like, you know, I just don't... I don't want to, like... 
Maybe so, I'll just send so, uh, it. I'll send a DM. We'll Hannah, see what happens. What do you but... think about Gnosticism? Huh? Like, huh? Huh? She's like, what's a psyop? <laughs> <laughs> she would have no idea what we're talking about. Yurishima Otaru said, no, Brett, I don't know what. Could you explain it? I did explain it, my friend. And the Manic Mustache said, Society of Magical Ninjas, safe for work title. It's going to be interesting to review that one, um, you know, trying to find a way to, to do so in a, in a manner that's not going to come off as like ideologically charged. You know, if you hate the movie, they're going to, they're going to automatically assume it's because you're a bad person rather than just critiquing the film. I mean, I'm fine with critiquing the film for ideological reasons. I'm saying, but like to the normie, to a normie viewer, they would, you would hope that they would see the critique as just neutral. You know, I'm criticizing this movie. But to the, you know, to those who are not normies, like apparently us, yeah. um, you know, they're fine with that. Jewish AF said, not a real holiday and definitely not a real woman. Cam, uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, it's, it's not a real holiday, I guess. But uh, I know what, what constitutes a real holiday? There's international talk like a pirate day. Is that a real holiday? It's not a bank holiday. That's I mean, sure. every day is a holiday. Camelot says, it. why y'all not dancing like I did? Well, normally... Buddy, we would, but today, in honor of uh, Bucko's passing, we have chosen to remain at least somewhat solemn. Oh, I'm not even wearing black. Yeah, the one day you don't wear black. Damn, okay. Bucky Ducky said, Mary, no trust between women. Kind of sad. Okay. Didn't make it about women. There are plenty of flakes around here, and we're not going to name them. DCNC said, we want cute fish lady. I'll ask. I don't know if I'm going to get a response, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I would like to know what she thinks about being called cute fish lady. She's probably heard it before. I imagine the <laughs> like Sarah is, you know, has her own critique of being called coffee mommy, which, you know, you know um, she people found this post of, of hers with her boyfriend for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And um, all of these responses were like, he's a juicer. He's on steroids. He looks gay, blah, blah, blah. Like they're all insulting this girl's boyfriend. You're just so clearly jelly. So jealous. It's just so like blatantly, yeah. you know, you're the have not and you're mad at what they have. It's very sad. That's why I stay out of the comment sections. Like, why do people do that? I just don't understand. Do you think that we are like imagining you behind the screen being more muscular and masculine than that guy? Yes, that's exactly what I'm imagining. Like you're the Chad meme mm. who's like calling out that guy for, for looking gay? No, no, I don't think so. I suppose it's also more genuine of her to actually post pictures with a boyfriend rather than look, uh, like try to appear single, which is something that somebody who relies on sexuality would do. Sure, I don't think she even does that. Um, Pat the Plumber said it's called Overtime Mary. Put some in. <laughs> I saw somebody also say this is why there's a wage gap. For I don't get paid more for yeah. gamer maids. Yeah. Hell no. Uh, so Francisca Sanchez Jr. said engagement farming is the psyop. When will the PCC cultural revolution begin? We're already in the middle of it. Can't you tell by my <laughs> excited tone? Okay. I can't even muster my normal like I, I think I screamed a little bit before the show and I and it like wore me out right away. I was like oh. I didn't even hear I guess I just block it out. Yes. No. Uh, Bucky Ducky says Brett you totally do not stay out of the comment sections. I don't post a lot of comments and I, I certainly don't in random people's section in random people's like posts and stuff like that. I might read but I don't engage. Yeah. Uh, Bookstore Thor says Red Sonia is the bad movie remake we don't want. Yeah, somebody pointed out it was Blood uh, Bloodshot was the was the Vin Diesel movie that nobody ended up seeing because it was like uh, middle of COVID and it's very much like one of these comic book characters that's just not going to draw a large audience whether they like to admit it or not. Um, there's only so many big main you know main level characters. There's only so many Superman. Batman and Spider-Man's out there and I guess now an Iron Man and stuff like that and all these other ones just won't and uh, I wasn't actually a huge fan of that uh, like Mary did a very good job of explaining to you like all of the background of what was going on with uh, the Red Sonia story and how it's been cursed from the beginning but basically my tweet was just very sarcastic saying like look I'm sure this bodes really really well for the, this woman's quote about 
subverting the male gaze. This is going to bode really, really well for this movie. It's going to make no less than a billion dollars. I expect nothing less than 10 sequels and a spin-off TV show with rhetoric like that around the film. It looks fantastic! The director of the movie is a man, okay? Is a biological male who identifies as a woman. And you're talking about subverting the male gaze. This whole movie sounds like the male gaze, sweetie. <laughs> what did you think you were doing? High Vulture 75 said, technically we did see Sarah on PCC today in the Bocus tribute. So it's your turn to appear on Gamer Maids. Okay, that's that's a loophole. DCNC said, did you make it to Sheets for lunch? I never go to Sheets for lunch. You only go in the middle of the night when you're ashamed and don't want anyone to see you <laughs> yeah, buying no, sheets tacos. No, no, okay, no. No, we know the I truth. had it's them fine. yesterday. You don't need to tell us. I had them yesterday and they were amazing. They were perfect. They're the greatest thing ever. You just eat these like every day now. No, apparently. no. This is the first time in at least a week. Okay. That's brave like of you. Like work, work week. Not, That's brave. Work week, not seven day week. <laughs> You should have given up Sheets Tacos for Lent. That's a good idea. Gordon Shumway said, I just saw on Twix, Billy Baldwin posted a jab at Sharon Stone about some stuff that happened during the filming of Silver. Do you guys know anything about this? I totally forgot Silver existed. No, I'll have to look that up. Perhaps it's something that wait, we can... Wait, is it Sliver or Silver? Uh, I, wait, I'd have to look it up. It's not something I've heard of. So we'll have to look up that up and possibly it's something we end up talking about tomorrow. Sharon Stone was in the news recently because I think she was the one we talked about where she was in there with like the Sony executive who like just like whipped it out in front of her. Oh, yeah. 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 Is it about that? Uh, probably something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, guys. Again, I just want to say one more time that we uh, we already, they're saying it's Sliver. Uh, we, we miss Bocus already. We miss Bucko mm-hmm. already. It's very, very sad. Um, she, uh, I'm looking to see the chat if there's anything else. Somebody says sheep tacos. Is that like a euro? Sheep doesn't sound like a good thing to eat. Mm. Someone said I never talk about my boyfriend. Okay, I what, think that... What, what? In what context would it come up? It, yeah, I don't know. But look, if I didn't talk about him, you wouldn't know that he exists, no. right? So how... And we're talking about him now. Um, I don't want to post someone and open them up to the level of scrutiny um, that the internet provides. Perfectly know? reasonable answer. One more here from High Voltage seventy five says, "What's your fondest memory of Bocus? Do you have a fond memory of Bocus?" Um, I mean, he never liked me, so like, <laughs> this is difficult to say. But no, mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm a cat person. I tried to get him on my good side, but he he never really liked me as much as he liked you. Um, I I have mem- many fond memories of Bocus. Oh, I think I think I recorded a video where I was like um. I was like giving him some water from the from mm. the faucet the other day. It was really cute. Um, for me, it was uh, okay. So I've got a couple that like uh, I, I liked it when he would go out hunting and then try to bring you stuff back to show you and be very. Oh, excited. he brought like yeah. a dead yeah. bird. But one Once. of my, one yeah. of my favorites, uh, like uh, not not a favorite, but one of the scariest, I'll say. Okay, this is a, a couple years ago. Um, he went missing and we couldn't find him, and it was scary. And for me personally, like the last thing I ever want, like, so at at a certain point, right, uh, when he wasn't feeling well again, they weren't letting him outside. So I was always living in in terrible paranoia that I was going to leave a door open and he was going to get out and that would be the end of it. And then, you know, then your boss is like, you're the person who who brought about the end of my cat. And then you're you're either You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. So he was, he was, um, he was missing for a while and I'm starting to freak out. And I'm running through the, uh, through the all upstairs, downstairs, you know, this, this house is like multiple levels. Finally, I find him curled up asleep under the Christmas tree. And it was the most adorable thing I ever saw in my entire life. He was like watching you run yes. hysterically and through didn't the house. Care. Didn't let you know that he was alive. And I, and I love him for that. But for me, it's more the fact that he was such a big part of my daily routine. I would walk by him going upstairs and I say the same thing every day. Hello, Mr. Bocus. You were looking quite regal today. And he would kind of tilt his head up from his slumber because he's always sleeping right by the door. And we would share a, 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 a silent nod. Yeah. And I would go about my day and it was great. Yeah, he's he was very stoic but a sweetheart the, nonetheless. The independent nature of him is what I like the most. DC and C said, Is your BF natty? 
What does that even mean? No steroids. No. <laughs> That's such a weird question. Is that really that common? <laughs> Mr. Anderpson said sheep isn't good to eat. Rack of lamb, what? Uh, but is that sheep tacos? I've never had sheep tacos. Wait, why are we talking about sheep? Because I because he said so they mentioned sheets tacos and they said sheep tacos. I was like sheep tacos. I would try that. All right, guys, that. before we go, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, please and thank you. Mary, let everybody know where they can find you. You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. And also, please let us know who you want us to invite on the show. We need suggestions. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. <laughs> Guys, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasivic on both of those platforms. PCC is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify if you would prefer to listen rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and not TikTok at PopCultureCrisis. Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. One more here from HighVoltage75. He says, will the castle get another pet to fill the void it's not up to me my friend we'll have to wait and see yep. yeah yep. that'd be interesting all right guys we'll be back with another episode tomorrow we'll see you then bye, bye guys